Hello guys, Assalamu Alaikum. My name is Dr. Faraz Ahmed and in this video today we are going to talk about the ALS course in details. We will cover different things about the ALS course like when I should go for the ALS course, why it is necessary, how much is the fee, what is the structure of the course, how I have to book this course and we will also talk about the preparation of this course as well and after booking what should we do and what happen at the ALS center and how they do the assessment. So the first question is when I should go for the ALS course like if you have started working in a NHS I will suggest that you should go for the ALS course within six month to one year time because this is the time when people start thinking to go into the training so whichever training you want to go it is necessary that you should have. So the next question is what is ALS course? ALS course is basically advanced life support what does it mean like if you are working in the emergency department or you are working in the acute medical department there is some patient who is getting deteriorated so what you have to do so this course will let you know that how you can handle the acutely ill patient so this is very very important course when you will do this course your management, your skills, your confidence will change after doing this course. So let's talk about the course fee or the cost of the course. So the fee of the course varies from center to center. So there is a specific fee which Recess Council will charge you for the certificate of the ALS course and for the manual of the ALS course. So rest of the fee depends on city and depends upon the location and it varies from the uh, center to center. In general, it varies from the 500 pound to the 800 pound. So I did my course in the Glasgow and it was little expensive so I paid 670 pound so let's years. talk about the structure of the course so basically there are two type of the ALS courses and both courses result into same certificate so one course is called ALS course which is a two-day course you will go to the center of the ALS and there you will be taught they will give you lectures they will assess your skills they will teach you skills and on the second day in the evening time they will take your MCQs test and then they will take the cardiac arrest station as well but in the ALS course this is a one-day course so what happened that Research Council UK they arrange everything like all the lectures will be given to you in a recorded form so after watching all the videos and after watching all the modules online what you will do next day you will move toward the ALS center and there you have to appear in the MCQ station and then you have to appear in the cardiac arrest station so these are the two type of courses one course is two day course and the other one is the one day course so basically the major part of the one day course is online so next very important part of this video how to book this ALS course you know it is little bit tricky to find the seats of the ALS course so I have made a separate video on how to book the ALS course you can find the link of that video in either corner of this screen so please watch this video uh, to know how to uh, book this course so the next question is what to do after booking the ALS course and the best answer is you have to wait wait and wait six to four weeks before your ALS course exam the Jesus Council UK will send you a manual of the ALS course and you have to read that manual thoroughly so let's talk about how to prepare for this course. As I just mentioned, Research Council UK is going to send you ALS manual four to six weeks before your exam. So what you have to do in those four to six weeks, you have to read that manual thoroughly because there will be MCQs paper and you have to get 75% marks in those MCQs. If you're not going to take 75% mark in the MCQs, unfortunately unfortunately yeah. you will be going to fail your ALS course and apart from that you have to practice for the stations as well although there will be enough practice in the two-day course but still if you have time you can practice with a pillow or you can practice with your colleague at your hospital or your accommodation it will definitely definitely help you so let's talk about what happens at the ALS center. So on the day of your course, when you will go to the ALS center, you will be taught over there for one and a half day and in the remaining time, they will take your MCQ test and then they will take your cardiac arrest station. So what happened on the day one, like they will give you lecture on the introduction of the ALS course, then they will give you lecture on the recognition and the prevention of the deterioration of the patient using the ABCDE approach. And then they will teach you about the cardiac arrest station, then they will do the you know different types of the skill yeah. station then they will do different type of the demos and you will have to practice over there as well so on the next day in the morning again there will be the same lectures including the lectures on the different topics including the abgs bradycardia tachyarrhythmias and all these things you will take all the lectures over there and then after doing this they will take your mcqs test and after the mcqs test they are going to check you in the cardiac arrest station unfortunately unfortunately if you're going to fail your mcqs keep in mind that they will not allow 
allow you to appear in the cardiac arrest station. So this is the last part of this video. Let's talk about how they assess you. So as I just mentioned, you will appear in the MCQs, then you will appear in the cardiac arrest station. So if you are going to score more than 75 or the 75% marks in the MCQs part, definitely they will allow you to go for the cardiac arrest station. And if you pass both, what they will do? They will declare you that you are a successful candidate of the ALS score. So let's talk about the other thing. Unfortunately, if you are going to fail your cardiac arrest station, so what will happen? They will give you another chance for the cardiac arrest station and the topic in the second chance will be different from the first chance. So please keep in mind, if you are going to fail MCQs, you are fail. But unfortunately, if you are going to fail cardiac arrest station, there is another chance on the same day. But if you are not able to pass MCQs or you are not able to pass cardiac arrest station in both attempts, so what you will do? So you can reappear in the ALS course in the same center within three months. So let me tell you about my own experience. So please keep one thing in your mind. This is not exam. This is not your exam. This is just assessment of your skills, like how you are going to manage a deteriorating patient. So for the MCQs portion, I read ALS manual two to three times and fortunately, fortunately, all the MCQs were from the manual and definitely all the MCQs will be from the manual. So what you have to do for the MCQs part, you have to read the uh, manual thoroughly at least two to three times. Please keep in mind, it will take time when you will be reading the manual first time and in the second and the third attempt, you can read the manual even five to six hours. And I scored 94% in my MCQs part. So after this, I went for the cardiac arrest station. So my cardiac arrest station was basically a patient who was bleeding heavily from the front passage and patient got admitted in the ward with the chest infection two days back. So what happened at that time, uh, they gave me the history that patient uh, presented to the hospital with a chest infection and he was admitted in the ward and he was a known case of the chronic renal failure as well. So when I started assessing the patient using the A, B, C, D e approach, on the E when I exposed the patient, examiner told me that there is a lot of blood coming from the front passage of the patient. So at that moment, I started patient on the fluid and I requested the O negative blood six units. So at that moment, patient stopped breathing. So I started CPR, I called for help, and resuscitation team came over there. So what happened? I led the team. So uh, we gave two shocks to the patient and patient got revived. So after this, I handed over the patient to the ICU team and this was all from the my case. So they declared on spot, Fraz, you have passed the cardiac arrest station and I was very happy at that moment. So please keep in mind that if you are going to perform very well in the cardiac arrest station, you will be declared passed on spot. But if your performance is not like good, so, so what they will say, they will say, Fras, you can go out of the room and we will discuss with each other and then we will let you know about the decision. So then two examiner will discuss your performance and after this what will happen they will come out of the room and they will tell you either you have passed the station or you have failed the station if unfortunately you failed it what happened you have to reappear in the cardiac arrest station on the same time so guys this was all about regarding the cardiac arrest station and the ALS score so if you have any questions you can ask me in the comment box you can follow me on the Instagram and you can directly message me over there I try to answer all the messages on the Instagram and I try to answer all the comments as well so thank you very much for watching the video